welcome to epg parshala this module is titled chi square test and test of significance based upon the chi square probability distribution so chi square is a very special case of a probability distribution in earlier modules we have seen t distribution and the test based upon the t distribution for example students t test and anova and uh, then we have seen f distribution and f uh, the test of uh, f uh, for example the anova there are two kinds of anova we have discussed in the f distribution today's lecture will be about the chi square distribution which is uh, the distribution is actually uh, put forth by one of the father of statistics that is carl pearson in 1900s so the chi square distribution is of extreme use if you are analyzing the categorical variable not the numerical but the mostly the categorical variables will have extreme use for the chi square test so there are two types of chi square test that we will be uh, covering in this module the first one is the chi square goodness of fit which is more like a correlation uh, that we will be covering the correlation module the second one will be the chi square test of goodness of fit which is more like regression so you have if you have a model uh, or if you have a prior hypothesis you are using chi square test of the goodness of fit to prove or to disprove your prior hypothesis so these two things two kinds of chi square test will be deliberated in this particular module so now let us start with uh, what this chi square uh, distribution is all about so as you can see in this particular slide the chi square is a special case of gamma distribution where the shape parameter is of extreme importance as you can see here as the kappa parameter that is basically your degree of freedom as the degree of freedom increases you know the chi square distribution changes its shape so if the degree of freedom is 1 for example it is typically l shaped as you can see in this particular uh, slide the yellow one is the kappa is just 1 as you increase it then it changes it peaks up the distribution peaks up so the chi square distribution is a special case of the gamma distribution it is asymmetric and its values are always positive so if you get a high chi square that means that the p value is going to be low and if you get a low chi square that means that the p value is going to be high so probably you would like to get uh, you're trying to get a chi square which is very low so that you're going to get a high p square so if you get a very high chi square uh, proportionately your p value is going to be very low so there are two types of tests based upon the chi square distribution as i've already explained to you the first one is called pearson's chi square test of independence of two categorical variables so this particular test is to test whether two categorical variables are associated or correlated so it's a kind of a correlation where there is no hypothesis or no model to test upon it's simply just two factors or two variables uh, we are looking at uh, these two variables are covariating you know covariable so that is a type of a correlation now second test is called chi square test of the goodness of fit of an observed distribution data to a theoretically expected distribution the model so observed data versus the model where you expect your data to fit in so how good the fit is so that is particular uh, goodness of fit and uh, this chi square test is a very good goodness of fit for categorical variables but if your variables are not really categorical if you are working with numerical data or continuous data then perhaps you would be interested to do your studies with regression analysis but here in this case it is for the categorical variables so of course in the in the case of any of the chi square tests there are a few assumptions that you have to verify that all the assumptions are your data set is actually uh, forming in so the first one is the random observations observations have to be random second is independent uh, measurements the measurements have to be independent and the data needs to be accurate so note that there is no explicit assumptions about the distributions of populations from which these samples are drawn as chi square is considered as a non parametric test when we were describing about the t distribution and f distribution and the test based upon those distributions like t test and uh, anova we made an explicit assumption about the you know that the probabilistic uh, distribution of the populations where our sample came from the assumption is that the population should follow the gaussian distribution or 
the bell shape distribution but in the case of chi square there is no such demand no such assumption is uh, needed for to perform the chi square so the chi square test is a kind of a non parametric test because it is a distribution independent test so coming to the first test that is chi square test of independence as described by the carl pearson in 1900s to see association between two categorical variables so it's basically a test of correlation for the categorical variables so here the null hypothesis is that the variables are statistically independent while alternate hypothesis is that the variables are statistically dependent so these two tests are uh, being actually uh, you know these two hypotheses are being tested with our chi square test intuition behind the test statistic is to summarize the difference between observed cell counts and expected cell counts what is expected if the null hypothesis is true that is what you call the expected cell count so notation is that f o for observed frequency or the cell count while f e for expected frequency right that given that our null hypothesis is right r is number of rows in the table while c is number of columns in your table now the chi square test statistic can be computed using such a small uh, uh, formula here it is chi square obtained is equal to sigma fo minus fe whole square divided by fe as i told you fo is the observed frequency while fe is the expected frequency given the null hypothesis is true divided by the fe so that is how to uh, get the chi square which is quite simple here is the first example is there any association between the income level and the happiness level so as the income increases does the happiness level increases to study imagine we have done a questionnaire survey and obtain the result as below as you can see in this particular table that summarizes the result so as you can see uh, rich middle poor these there are three categorical variables here i mean the uh, levels of that particular variable is the income here the, there are three level rich middle and poor while in the case of happiness level again the categorical lo levels are high middle and low and uh, these are the numbers now so first step to do the chi square test is to find the row totals and column totals so simple sum all those on both directions for example rich uh, amongst the rich income level high plus middle plus low is 615 so the co the row totals as well as column totals you do and finally overall total that is 2955 so as i explained to you the first step in chi square test of independence is to calculate the f e after you complete that first computation uh, of the row total and the column total and the overall total your yes, next step is to calculate the expected frequency so the expected frequencies of all these cells needs to be computed as the row total into column total divided by the overall total so you have to multiply the row total with column total and divide it with the overall total to get the the frequency uh, expected frequency of each cell for example the first cell here it is 272 right so that number of that particular cell doesn't matter it only matters your column total and the row total so here the column total for that particular cell is 911 so that is a column right towards bottom you go from that cell that is 911 you have to multiply this number with the row total that is 615 and now divide this particular in parenthesis by 2955 to get the final answer which is 189.6 you have to do the same operation for the rest of the cells so it's always better if you do that linearly right in one excel sheet you can perform it so the first column will be all of your uh, observed frequencies then expected frequencies you can do now you can actually calculate the same thing right so finally you have to take a summation of all those things right so you have now calculated the fe of all those right fo we have fe we have so this is yet another way of representing the same thing in parenthesis you have fe while non parenthesis it is fo the observed frequencies for example 272 is observed frequency while the expected frequency is 189.6 that we got it from the column total and the row total now let us now compute the chi square test statistic in a systematic way so first of all we have we know already the fo right the observed frequencies now we know we just calculated the fe which is expected frequencies next step is the, the third step is fo minus fe 
and the fourth step is square it that is in parenthesis fo minus fe whole square and finally fo minus fe whole square divided by fe and you have to sum all of these values on the top right side the column so you are going to get the chi square test statistic is 172.28 for this data as i told you already the chi it's an inversely proportional if you are getting a very high chi square that means uh, your p value is going to be very low here the chi square uh, value is quite high so you expect your p value to be very low so next step is to look up the chi square table to find the chi square critical value as in the case of t distribution f distribution that i have already explained to you how to check up the, the uh, t table as well as f table and to do the hypothesis testing in the similar way here we have to check the chi square table and uh, to find the critical value for which we should know the degree of freedom and the significance level so significance level is as a rule of thumb it's going to be 0.05 unless you change it for chi square test the degree of freedom can be calculated by the following equation so equation is very simple number of rows minus 1 multiplied by number of columns minus 1 so remember that these numbers means that the actual data not including any totals or labels or headers nothing it's only your data that the numerical value that you put inside your table for example in our earlier table uh, there are three columns and three rows so three minus one that is two multiplied by three minus one two so two multiplied by two that is equal to four so that is our degree of freedom and we have to look up that number in 0 0.05 so as in this case as you can see here in this particular slide the critical values of chi distribution so you have to go the column is 0 0.05 that is our significance level while the row is uh, as you can see here 4 we have already calculated the degree of freedom for this data set is 4 so the number is going to be 9.488 as the table value is far less than the observed value so the p value should be very less so less than 0 0.05 as a table value the critical chi square is 9.488 is far less than our obtained chi square test statistic that is 172.28 we can conclude that p should be less than 0 0.05 and we reject the null hypothesis of independence of two variables and conclude that two variables are dependent or associated so both these variables that is income level and happiness level are correlated right or co-varying moving towards the right in the same table we can see that even at the significance level of 0 0.005 the critical chi-square that is 14.86 is still far less than our obtained chi-square test statistic therefore the p-value must be less than 0 0.005 so even at that significance level our p-value is significant that is what you can infer from the chi-square table so of course there is no support for the chi-square test in the excel as with other kinds of non-parametric test but you can use a number of online calculators for the chi-square test of goodness of fit uh, as well as for the the uh, independence right one such a calculator which i suggest you to try is turner faculty swauedu that the link that is appearing on the module uh, the slide second example is that the question is are the homicide rate and the volume of gun sales are related for a sample of 25 cities as you can see here the gun sale high low while the homicide rate is low and high so we have this is a two into two contingency table we have only two rows and two columns in this particular thing so first step as i told you is to calculate the totals of row total and the column total then of course we will have to see the the observed frequency and the expected frequency observed frequency is what you find exactly you don't have to calculate it but expected frequency you have to calculate it from row total multiplied by column total divided by the whole total so that way you can calculate it so here it is two into two contingency table and here the, the issue the one main issue with this kind of small data is that if the chi-square test statistic is of course it is sensitive to the small cell sizes whenever any of your cell size is less than five as in this case it is less than uh, you know less than of course five a slightly modified formula is to be used so that slightly modified formula is called yates correction for the continuity and to calculate the chi-square test by hand right so the modified formula is 0 
5 is deducted from the absolute value of f4 minus fe before squaring it. So, instead of f4 minus fe by fe, the sum of that value, here it is in parenthesis the absolute value of f4 minus fe minus 0 0.5 whole squared divided by fe. So, that particular modified formula is being used. However, you should note that most of the statisticians agree that Yates correction overcorrects it and it is not recommended. So, there is actually a little bit catch before you use this Yates correction. So, you should know that that is not really a good way to good approach also. So, if you are working with this kind of 2 into 2 contingency table often used for case control studies in clinical research. The best test is Fisher's exact test that can be found in the graph pad quick calculators, the link given in the module. So all you have to do is that in that quick calc, you have to input the your data, right? The observed frequencies into the cell, the empty cell. For example, 73, 756, 14 and 826. So click on it, that will actually tell you exactly uh, what is your the chi-square test statistic, right? In the Fisher's exact test. So, the, the Fisher's test work with this particular formula which is, uh, you know, it is quite intuitive. A plus B factorial plus C plus D factorial plus A plus C factorial multiplied by B plus D factorial, right? So, all this factorial you multiply it divided by A factorial, B factor, C factor, D factorial to after all N factorial. So, that, that kind of intuitive formula is being used for the Fisher's exact test. So all you have to do is to input that number. So in the, our second example is the high murder, murder rate versus a gun sale. All you have to do is that you have to input the number and choose that appropriate test. Here we are choosing Fisher's exact test and then p value we are calculating the two tailed p value as I explained to you earlier in the module of confidence interval. Uh, the p value it's always better to go for two tailed p value if you do not know about the directionality of the fact. So, as you can see here, the p-value for the gun sale is, uh, two-tail p-value is 0 0.2377. So, 0 0.2377 is a lot higher than our cutoff, that is the critical value is 0 0.05. So, uh, you can conclude that you don't have any, uh, you know, you don't have any reason to reject your null hypothesis. So, it is not really statistically significant. Next set of test of chi-square test is that chi-square test of goodness of fit which I told you this test is similar to regression if you have a model to test. So it's, a, it's about the fitness of model with your data right or data with your model. So to test the fit of observed data to the model or expected data is that particular test of goodness of fit is being used. Formula is very similar to the earlier test of uh, the correlation right sigma f4 minus fe whole square divided by the fe the exact same formula but f4 is the observed frequency fe is the expected frequency uh, the only difference from the chi-square test of independence is that fe is not computed from f4 but from a model in the case of goodness of fit fe is calculated from f4 why because we are calculating fe from the row total and column total and the overall total. So basically this row total and column total as well as overall total depends upon the observed frequencies, right? So uh, and this expected is calculated from in a way from the observed frequency. But in this case, it's not that case. It's all depends upon the model, whichever model that you would like to work on. In our first example, let us see a uh, famous experiment by uh, the father of genetics, the Grieger Mentor. Out of 556 P plant, Grieger Mender observed in his famous dye hybrid cross four seed phenotypes in frequencies given below. So the types of seeds that he, he found, the four morphologies of the, the seeds or phenotypes of the seeds are round yellow, round green, wrinkled yellow and wrinkled green. He simply counted number of round yellow, number of round green and so on and he found that observed frequencies that much we have it now as of now fo is ready now second step uh, of course is fe how to calculate the fe so grigor mental has its own model of his dihybrid cross according to his uh, famous law of independent of assortment mental expected a certain ratio in his phenotype the ratio as per his expectations were 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1 for those phenotypes so of course that ratio is a model a theoretical expected proportion so let us plot those expected proportions in this table as well so in this particular table 
as the next row you are putting the expected proportions 9 out of 16 will be a round yellow as per his expectations 3 out of 16 will be round green 3 out of 16 will be a wrinkled yellow and 1 out of 16 will be wrinkled green why 16 it's the total 9 plus 3 plus 3 plus 1 so all these expected proportions will add up to 1 naturally so now the next step is that expected proportion each of these expected proportion you have to multiply with the the total number of observations so the n that is 556 uh, seeds that the the Grigor Mendel have observed in his famous experiment so 556 multiplied by 9 by 16 is equal to 312.75 so that way you will have to calculate the expected frequency for the rest of the cell so note that the total expected frequencies add up to the total of course that is 556 so uh, you know that will be exactly same the total remains same so two hypotheses that we are going to test in this goodness of fit is that serve frequency is same as the expected frequency that means that our data fits the model well that is our null hypothesis in our alternate hypothesis observed frequencies do not fit our model so observed frequencies is not equal to the expected frequency so these two are our hypothesis null hypothesis and alternate hypothesis perhaps mental wanted to prove that his data confirms to his model so uh, basically he want to prove that the, his null hypothesis is true alternate hypothesis is wrong you know that is what probably he want to prove it so you can do the same chi-square test exactly same you can plug into that same equation so f o f e i've told you how to calculate the f e the second column the third column is f o minus f e the fourth column is f o minus f e squared and the fifth column is f o minus f e whole square divided by the f e and finally you have to sum all those values in your last column to get your final chi-square test statistic which is 0 0.470024 which is very very low chi-square as i told you low chi-square correspond to a high p-value and high chi-square uh, you, you know correspond to a low p-value so in this case the p-value you expect it to be very high so chi-square test statistic is 0 0.47 uh, that you can actually look it up in your chi-square table to find the chi-square critical value for which we should know the degree of freedom and the significance level uh, significance level is 0 0.05 for chi-square test goodness of fit our data is grouped only in rows so the column doesn't matter so in the case of the other one the independence of uh, categorical variable so there is actually column as well as row but in the case of goodness of fit there is no column so only in the row so the total number of rows minus one so in our example there are total four number of rows subtract with one to get three so three is the degree of freedom which is very easy to compute right so you will have to look up the degree of freedom three corresponding to our significance level 0 0.05 and our critical value of chi square is 7.815 which is way high than our observed value so as the table value of chi-square 7.815 is far higher than our obtained chi-square test statistic which is 0 0.47 we can conclude that p is higher than 0 0.05 and the results are not significant as whenever you get a very high p value uh, significant uh, you know it is not really significant and we fail to reject the null hypothesis of equal frequency so frequencies are not really equal it means that our data is not significantly deviating from the model the Grieger Mendel's model uh, the, the data is fitting well that is exactly the same thing so a high p-value means that the data fits model really well and it is desirable in the goodness of fit analysis so uh, most of the other statistical analysis it, the desirable uh, attribute is a very low p-value but in this case because uh, as well as in the case of regression you should get uh, you know a very high p-value because you want to say that your model perhaps right your model fits your data very well so moving towards left in the table we can see that even at a significance level of 0.1 the critical chi-square which is 0.58 is still less than our obtained chi-square test statistic and therefore the p-value must be higher than 0.9 which is quite high the p-value is quite high almost all of the mentals data have unrealistically high p-values that led fisher to doubt 
you know the father of statistics the fisher he doubt that whether these values are real or not it could be even fabricated that is exactly what the fisher said so microsoft excel do not support the chi square test online calculators like the one below that you can do the job very well so the one which i had given you in the module which is of the sox uh, sci uh, statistics.com that you can go and check it out that particular site our next example is does the sex ratio in Batinda in Punjab significantly biased or not here again our null hypothesis is the Fisherian sex ratio right the model is that sex ratio is not biased so that means 0 0.5 0 0.5 so 50 50 50 percentage are male while 50 percentage are the female so total males are equal to the total female that is our null hypothesis while our alternate hypothesis is that the sex ratios are biased it's not really equal it's unequal so now let us actually put that in our two in the two contingency table so observed one is 534 and 466 out of thousand expected is of course you don't really have to calculate it it is basically out of thousand it has to be 50 50 so 500 and 500 so thousand is your expected as per the fisherian model you know so we will have to plug that to get the chi square which is sigma observed minus expected whole square divided by the expected and you can calculate and see that uh, you know let it be your assignment which is actually quite simple the third example is the offspring of the self pollination of a heterozygote garden pea the null hypothesis is that the offspring will appear in a ratio of three-fourth dominant which is purple to one-fourth recessive which is white here the absurd is 290 of the purple while 110 of uh, white out of 400 and the expected is you have to calculate that from our model though so the ratio is the, the model is that 3 fourth is the dominant purple so 3 fourth multiplied by 400 is your expected for the purple while expected for the white is 1 fourth multiplied by 400 which is 100 right so now you will have to calculate observe minus expected you square it and divide by the expected and sum it to get your final chi square so this is one test for uh, for the mendel's first law which is the law of segregation the fourth example is the color preference for 150 customers for thai superior car dealership right so you can see that on the category yellow red green blue and white different colors of the car absurd frequencies are 35 50 30 10 and 25 now the dealer has his own expectations so that is the model right the expected model for the sales span is 30 45 15 15 45 so as per this model most of the customers that he expect uh, to prefer either white or red so you can do this particular test will the model fits very well for the data in in your question or not so if you have only two categorical variable or two categories like head and tail in coin flipping or male or female the gender in the example which i gave you about the sex ratios in badinda you have only two categories or the mental p purple and white so you have only two categories so in that particular cases the best option for the goodness of fit test is binomial test which calculate the exact probabilities for you know for you by using the binomial equation so uh, in the chi square test is only approximate p values but in the case of binomial test the p value produced is exact so it is a lot more preferable so binomial test again is available through a uh, graph pads quick cal you can see that link in uh, the links of the module so you can check it out so in summary chi square is a very very important probabilistic distribution introduced by Carl Pearson the founding father of the discipline of statistics and biostatistics Carl Pearson is actually uh, uh, originally an evolutionary biologist so chi square test is mainly used for categorical variables so there are two kinds of chi square test chi square test of goodness of fit which is like a regression if you have a model while chi square test of uh, independence that is for the correlation if you do not have any model thank you